Christ Point Oasis and Happy New Year. You know, some of your most productive moments come when you go beyond the red light of confining perspectives, practices, and problems that often detain others. You know, it's at this point that God is able to increase your productivity and minister grace and display his awesome glory in your life. That's what happened in the life of Gideon. His life had been put on hold by the enemy. But in this text that we're going to look at today, we're going to see how God has given him the green light. For many, the incidents of 2020 have placed a lot of people on hold and given them a red light, placed them in a holding pattern. But you weren't meant to stay in a holding pattern forever. So as you begin 2021, here are some things that can propel your success. Because like Gideon, God has given us the green light to go forward. Now, number one, you need to clarify your own perceptions about your faith and fully accept your commission to progress. I think a lot of people don't move forward simply because they really haven't taken time to understand their faith in view of what they're going through. Many times we find ourselves in situations that are messed up. I'm just going to call it a mess. And the question is, is how did we get in that mess? You know, many times we didn't get there alone. Our messes can be situations that are related to our family, our jobs. Sometimes it can just be uh, plain mistakes that we've made in life. And sometimes God will allow the mess that we get in to um, cause us to get to the point where we're tired enough to let him get us out of it. Because there are a lot of messes that are beyond our capacity to get us out of. In the text, the Midianites had overcome the children of Israel and it began to oppress them. In fact, the Bible says that the Lord handed them over to the Midianites. And the reason is because they allowed themselves to engage in the worship of gods that were no gods. They began to pick up the practices of the land. And I think you have to ask yourself the question, have I picked up practices that I shouldn't pick up? Is my communication the way it should? Do I use words that I shouldn't use? Do I interact with people in ways I shouldn't interact? Do I find myself not giving devotion and allegiance to God as much as I should? Do I worship enough? Do I tithe? Do I do all of those things? And I think that we ought to ask ourselves the question, why is it that we find ourselves in the predicament that we find ourselves in? Are we truly devoted to God? Well, Israel's problem is that they have become devoted to everything else except for their God. And because of that, then God allowed the Midianites to overrun them. The enemy, which were the Midianites, attacked everything. I mean, attacked their productivity. Every time that they would begin to produce a crop, every time they would do anything that was good, that was beneficial to them, it seemed like the Midianites would come and overcome it. And let me tell you something, productivity can become problematic when we fail to honor who gives it to us. Many times we don't recognize that God has blessed us with so much. He blesses us with air to breathe. He blesses us with the health and the strength to be able to do all that we do. And many individuals in the world fail to give him honor and glory because of that. And they, that, and they fail to share the blessing with others that God has given them. And so therefore, in the text, we learned that he sent a prophet and the prophet told them, shared with them the reason weren't, don't you remember the God that brought you out of Egypt? Don't you remember the God that delivered you from Pharaoh? Don't you, don't you remember the God that has helped you to overcome your enemies? But they failed to listen to him. And we need to make sure that we listen to God. So therefore, we got to get to the point where we accept the mess that we're in. A lot of times we want to shift the blame. The Bible says that uh, Gideon in the text began to question when the angel of the Lord came and began to acknowledge who he was as a warrior and let him know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was with him. You see, God hears. God doesn't want you to stay in that holding pattern forever. God wants to allow you the uh, victory. And so God will send a deliverer. And so the deliverer had to be one, first of all, who accepted the mess that he was in without shifting the blame. But the first thing you see him do is saying, well, if God is God, then why are we in this situation? 
Well, the problem is, is sometimes we uh, we can't see the reason that we've gotten in the situation, and then we want to blame others, and we want to blame God. But let me tell you, if you want to move forward, accept the mess that you're in. Accept the situation that you find yourself in, and don't try to shift the blame. Instead, be the solution. Take responsibility for your mess. Quit making excuses for the situations that you're in, the circumstances that you exhibit. Do not make excuses, but instead accept the situation. And another thing that you need to make sure you do is don't focus on your perceived inadequacies. One of the things that Gideon did in this text is he began to make excuses when God began to identify who he was, identify uh, him as a warrior. The first thing that Gideon began to say, well, is I'm from the weakest clan. I'm, I'm the youngest in the family. And he began to make excuses for why he can't. And you know, as long as we make decisions for why we can't, we never will. If you have a mind that can't, then you never will. You have to have a mind that says, I can. Oh yeah, I can. I believe it. You know, I I was excited. Uh, I heard uh, a message about my grandson and my grandson was talking to my, uh, my middle son and he was telling him that you shouldn't say I can't. I can't is a bad word. And I really was elated because I would always teach my children, my sons, the fact that you should never say, I can't. Because, you know, when you limit yourself to I can't, then you won't. So number one, the first thing that we said is that you need to understand how you got in the situation. Clarify your perceptions about your faith and fully accept your commission to progress. Stop putting the blame off on other individuals. Now, number two, believe you have the green light to proceed. You have to believe that you have the green light to proceed. You see, one of the things that you see Gideon doing is he says, okay, if, if, you're, if you're really uh, empowering me, then what I want to do is I want to offer a sacrifice in faith. So he goes and he begins to make a sacrifice and that sacrifice was received. When he received it, he built an altar to recognize that success. And I think that that's what we need to do as we move into 2021. We need to offer sacrifices in faith and then we need to build altars where we've seen success. That's right, remind ourselves that God is with us, that God never leaves us, and remind ourselves that we are warriors. Now, another thing, as we believe that we have the green light to receive, then we need to make sure that we evaluate and not allow family devotions and things that we are connected to to hinder our progress. In other words, if there are things that are wrong, we have to learn how to set them right. And we have to stand for right, even if it's in defiance of common understandings. One of the problems in, in Gideon's life and in Gideon's family is that his father worshiped the Baal and had an altar that was built to the Baal. But I want you to know that he tore down his father's altars. Sometimes you need to tear down some things that even your family embrace and your family hold, even if it means defying that understanding. Actually, Gideon did it at night because he was afraid of how the people would react. And in fact, in the daytime, the people did react negatively. In fact, they uh, thought that they should do something negative against him. But you know what? Ultimately, God is your judge. And what they arrived at is if God is, if, if, if Baal is a God, if Baal is really a God, then let Baal handle the situation with Gideon. And from that very time, we began to see that the people began to acknowledge Gideon as Jeroboam. You see, ultimately, God is your judge. It's not people. Let God be your judge. And so, therefore, even if it means going against certain standards of the people, and even if the people do turn their back on you, ultimately, God is your judge. And so don't be afraid of what people think. Don't be afraid of what people say. But instead, make sure that you honor your God. And that's what Gideon did. And therefore, he developed a reputation for being one that honors God. And you know, it's the small victories that lead to bigger victories. 
Yeah, it's the small victories. Now, another thing as we were talking about is we're saying, believe that you have a green light. Well, learn how to place your fleece of wool on the threshing floor. I know what you're wondering. What do you mean by placing your fleece of wool on the threshing floor? Well, you need to let God know what you want and also seek his approval. And actually, that's what Gideon did. You see, Gideon wanted to make sure that he had the green light. And so therefore, in order to do it, he placed the fleece down and he said, Lord, if you are really with me and you want to use me as a warrior, then he says, make the fleece wet while the ground dry. And then God did that. The next day, he said, okay, well, let's try it this way. Make the fleece dry and the ground wet, and then I'll know. And so basically, what we begin to see is him seeking the approval of God. He wanted to make sure that he had the approval of God and that God was with him. And so therefore, in 2021, whatever our endeavors is, make sure God is with you. Make sure that you're moving in faith. Make sure that your faith is based on what God will do and not what God will not do. And another thing is you can't be afraid to fight. You can't. You see, you have to understand that God is really your army. See, the battle's not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. And if the battle belongs to the Lord and he has given you the approval and he has given you the green light, then you should move forward with all of your fight. So the third thing is you need to envision yourself a warrior and you need to choose your army. Envision yourself a warrior and choose your army. In other words, you can't be afraid to fight. As you go into 2021, you can't be afraid of fight. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to fight. You can't be afraid of pandemic. You can't be afraid of pandemonium. You can't be afraid of the political atmosphere. You can't be afraid of anything. Anything that hindered you in the past, you can't be afraid of it. You gotta press on. And you know what? You can't forget. You can't forget that God is your army. That's right. The battle belongs to him. It's not you. The battle belongs to him. God just wants to use you. God just wants you to face the enemy. But the battle belongs to him. And a lot of times when we begin to go into battle, we think that we need everything in order to win the battle. But I want you to know that you don't need, you don't need everything that you think you need in order to win this battle. In order to go forward, God has given you the green light. And so you have the green light. You don't need everything you think you need. You see what Gideon did? Gideon had called all of the other clans, all of the other families, all of the other tribes. And he gathered about 32,000 men. He did. Because he assumed that in order to go to the battle, I need to have as much weight as possible. I need to have as much force as possible. And so that's what we do. We, we think that we need people. We think that we need things. We need we think that we need alliances. We, we think we need all of those things. But I want you to know that you don't need everything that you think you need. The only thing you need is God. That's right. You see, sometimes God will put you in a position where you need to drop excess weight in order to increase your thrust. You ever seen a rocket ship when it takes off? The rocket ship is made up of several parts, but in order to have enough thrust to make it to its destination, it has to drop off things. It has to release part of itself in order to go farther. And that's the thing that happened. You see, Jeroboam, or Gideon, had called all of these soldiers in, 32,000 people. And the first thing he did is God said, no, you have too many. You have too many. And see, one thing you're going to learn about people is sometimes you've got to let some people go in order for you to move forward. Because everybody that's with you don't have the same motivation you have. That's right. In fact, not everybody has the same calling you have. And so there are some that are not really committed to what you're trying to do. There are some individuals that will leave you high if you go into battle with them. There are some individuals that, are, so you need to evaluate the relationships that you have. Some relationships won't help you as you pursue green lights that God has given you in your life. And you need to recognize that. And the way to recognize that is to commit yourself to God and his leadership. And God will let you know. God let Gideon know, look, 
you got too many. You got to let some go. And so the army, he began to communicate to them and 10,000 walked away immediately. 10,000, their hearts weren't there. 10,000, they were afraid. 10,000, they had to go back to their families. That was their priority. 10,000 left for other reasons. That's right. Sometimes individuals don't have the same heart for something that you have. And so therefore, when you give them the opportunity to go, they'll go. I mean, think of the story about Naomi and how that she had two daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Orpah. And so when she began to go back to her people, she gave them the opportunity to go back to their own land and Orpah took it. Orpah took it, but Ruth, her heart was right there. There are some people that are in it with you. They'll go all the way and you need to learn who those individuals are. And see, let me tell you something also. Sometimes we think we need things to bring about our success. Sometimes we think things is that which add to our true greatness. But I want you to know it's not about what you have in your hand. It's about what you have in your heart. You see, if you have your mindset where there is faith in God, that's what you need in order to get you through. It's not about how much you possess. It's not about your riches. It's not about your wealth and how much you bling you have. It's not about all of those things. It's about the mind. You know, someone says, in fact, Napoleon Hill made this statement. He said, what the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And I believe that. That's just the concept of faith. That says that if I have the faith, like the grain of a mustard seed, I can say to this mountain, be removed, and it will. So it's about faith, and it's about faith in the right object. It's about faith in the right place. It's about having faith in God. It's not about having faith in your alliances and your associations. Many times the Israelites, if you were to look through their history, they would try to make associations with Egypt and other nations, but that wasn't their salvation. Their salvation was trusting in God. Networking is good, but trust in a God was able to build the right connections, to build the right allegiances, to build the right. And you know what? Again, you'll find when you trust in God, you don't need as much as you would think you need. You don't need as many people in your life. You don't need as many possessions in your life. You don't need as many alliances. You just need God. That's right. Someone said, a friend of mine who actually was preaching recently said, sometimes you have to eliminate the extremities to strengthen the core. You have to understand, God is your core strength. God is the core strength of any endeavor. And if you listen to him, he will help you to lay aside the weight that hinders you, that causes you to come to a halt. In other words, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Now remember, you're considering yourself a warrior. And as you consider yourself a warrior, then you have to listen to those who see you winning victories rather than seeing you being defeated. You see, it's sad to say that there are too many people who are betting against you. Some people call them haters. And you can't focus on the haters. You can't focus on the individuals who are trying to hold you down. You can't focus on the individuals that enjoy looking at you stop at the stoplight. Because God has given you a green light. So you have to focus on those. If you receive messages, make sure you receive messages for those, from those who see you having a green light. Those who see your victory, they're going to be very important for you, especially as you proceed in 2021. Now, here's the fourth thing as you win the victory, give God. And I said, as you win the victory. Because victories may not necessarily come all at once. Sometimes victories come incrementally. But you have to learn how to see the victories. I think one of the problems that sometimes causes us to slow down is that we don't take time to see each victory. Some victories may be small victories, but every victory is a victory. A little while ago, I said, one of the things you see Gideon doing is that he offered sacrifice and then he built altar where he saw victory. 
victory is in Christ Jesus. He's made us promises. He says that we have won the victory in him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of y'all out there know that the God we serve is still awesome? And he still has power to fix even your situation today. I came to tell you he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Check it out. He paid out the little David as he stood before that giant so small. Check it out. Well, through the eyes of faith, little David's giant didn't seem so tall. I can hear him saying this. Well, with God on my side and the sling in my hand, he delivered me from the lion and the bear. And I know he's going to do it again. See, he has all power and I trust him because I know he can. And I know he will You fight all my battles If I just keep still I remember the children of Israel And how often they would soon forget Hey, the same God That brought them out of Egypt At the Red Sea Wouldn't even let them get away Oh no So when I'm faced with my trials And I'm trapped at my Red Sea I'm not buried by my situation Cause I know the Lord will do it again for me He'll do it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll do it Now I don't mean to get in your business But I came to tell you this evening He'll The Lord will make the way Out of no way He'll put it in his hands The Lord will bring a pride today yeah, I, I just want to know if there's anybody out there today, yeah, today, that believe that God still has power. Yeah, I see what your Bible's reading, your stories, but how many believe that it still applies today? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, tell them something. He'll go with you through the fire. He'll be with you every hour. Don't doubt him. God still has the power. I call on that. Tell him it's still real. My good friend Lazarus, take your time and test. They thought that I was dead and gone. My God ain't never, never, ever left me alone. I was on sin, God, back then. I tell you, you do it again. Oh, yeah. How many of y'all really believe that God can raise you up out of your situation? How many of y'all really believe that He can heal your sickness, pay your life?